takes and the heartbreaks in Magic the Gathering. We're running a little talk show tonight with uh, my good friend Matthew Hooks. Matthew, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Uh, we are, for the first time in an episode of Tapped, going to be handling contemporaneous breaking news, yeah, wow. which I'm very excited about. <laughs> right? We get to feel important for like a good 15 minutes or yeah, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We might actually beat the content wave on the internet yeah. for the Hopefully first I'll time. Hopefully I'll edit this within a month this time. <laughs> <laughs> no promises. Yeah. Right? I, I'm hyped to hear our like hot takes in three weeks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's exciting. Yeah. It's exciting. Well, uh, joining us uh, on the couch tonight is our very good friend Shane. Shane, how are you? Feeling good, man. Good to be here. Yeah, yeah. Happy to have you visiting from Denver. Mm -hmm. Yes, nice to be here again. I'll be back in Chicago, experience some CTA outages and, <laughs> and, and Chicago pizza. We were talking a little bit before the show, and you, like a lot of other players, took almost 20 years off from the game. Is that right? Yeah, 19 years. I played, you know, like everyone did. Uh, Teenager in high school playing some Ice Age in fourth edition with mm -hmm. terrible frozen shade based black decks. <laughs> and uh, then I started up again with cons and played my first night of cons pre release and saw a guy with Zendikar full art lands for yeah. his limited lands and yeah. Yeah, purchased those two weeks later. And that show <laughs> tells you uh, basically a yeah. hundred of those. Yeah. So it tells you what kind of person I am. Would you say that you hit the ground running on that one? Yeah, yeah. It's lots, lots of stumbles along the way, financially, uh, but no, we, we got there. It was great. Well, we're happy to have you back in the fold, even if your sabbatical is old enough to vote. We're glad that you're here. Uh, we've also got joining us tonight our very good friend, Dathan. Dathan, how the hell are you doing? I stay well. I stay well, Scott. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're, we're thrilled to have you on the program. Dathan is a very good longtime friend of mine, one of the guys who kind of got me back into the game. So an honor to have you here. Um, I'm going to kind of put him on blast for a second, though, and say we were talking before the show, mm -hmm. and Dathan's favorite set in all of Magic <laughs> is Cold Snap, and you just got to feed correct. me something about that. What, what's that? came out in the summer of 2006. Okay. Uh, I was in a pre-law camp, and I met my wife that summer, mm -hmm. then girlfriend. Okay. And uh, she encouraged me to go to the pre-release for Cold Snap. She encouraged Whoa, me to go. Whoa, that's why you married her. Well, naturally. that's one of many reasons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I went and I cleaned up. This is when pre-releases were still multiple rounds, one winner. And I went undefeated. I think I dropped two games wow. in the, mm. the process of getting to 6-0. and And then also crushed a draft. And it was just a format that worked really well for me. Uh, enjoyed it a lot. And I sold that booster box and the packs I won in that draft to get the gas money to go see my wife. Oh, <laughs> man. So without Cold Snap, I might not have afforded that gas. I yeah. didn't know that we were specializing yeah. in such warm and fuzzy content tonight. Yeah. This yeah. is fantastic. I'm not crying, you're crying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those, yeah. Are good, those are good feels. So yeah. after this, I'm just going to be a jerk. So okay. here we go. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, Can't just, wait. Just just takes and straight at each other. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, no? you're on the couch with me, so. All right, here we go. Speaking of this breaking news, and I use that term a little loosely, but it's literally being announced as we speak, subject to a leak that happened earlier today. Wizards of the Coast's big eSports announcement came out, which is essentially that they're going to drop about $10 million into like professional or quasi-professional event prize pools in 2019. Listen, details are hazy, and we're doing the best that we can do here, but as I understand it right now, this is only paper magic, despite being named eSports, but that's a whole nother thing, and Magic the Gathering Arena, mm -hmm. which means that there's no Magic the Gathering Online, no Moto, right? right? Uh, yeah. Additionally, we are also learning about the formation of what is called a Magic Pro League, which I guess is different than the Pro Tour or something. Uh, yeah, it sounds like it. Anyways, we are, we're the young Magic Cash Money billionaires now, right? And we're living <laughs> in a new era. What do you guys think about this? Yeah, so I mean, what we technically got, we got a early press release based on what they will be saying at these video game awards. And, and again, so. just, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, Shane, but I mean like right now, yeah. like literally yeah. as we're recording this episode. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, we have, we have $10 million being put towards, and I think they, they, they explicitly said split 50-50 mm. between arena and paper, mm -hmm. which is over 10 times what they currently allocate towards worlds plus their four pro tours. Cool. That's a huge amount a of big money. Jump. A, a big, big jump. It's a, it's a lot of money being put towards this. So they are definitely putting their flag on the ground saying, we want some money behind our eSport, which half is not E. <laughs> but what's 
odd to me is that this comes on the heels of, I think, maybe six weeks ago, them announcing we're going to do six Pro Tours next year. Mm -hmm. So how is that going to work with the formation of these Mythic tournaments, which feature... Mythic Championships, they, Shane. That's yeah. 32, the top 32 players. I'm guessing Pro Points or some kind of you know, point acclimation system. So I'm curious how is it all going to come out in the wash. Huh. I'm curious as well. Uh, Dathan, what's your first blush on this one? You know, Magic has gone towards the more casual crowd for a long time. Hmm. People have bemoaned the lack of competitive uh, you know, support. You know, pro players are mostly making their money from doing what? They're writing for yeah. private outlets, right. articles, being sponsored to get their cards. This is a move, including the contracts for pro players, which yeah. is more in line with supporting the pro environment and not just the casual. Kitchen table magic has never been better. When you get right. the arch yeah, yeah, enemy, yeah. the commander, everything with Battle it. Battle bond. Battle bond. <laughs> when you get all of those things flowing so well, I think it's kind of nice that Wizards is putting some money back into the competitive side of Magic. Yeah, you mentioned the word contract. They explicitly mentioned in the press release that we saw is they're going to give the, the top 32 players, they'll be contracted players. Mm -hmm. So it's just like it's, it's a source of income for the very best. That's correct. It's interesting, though, like we, we heard so much from the pros, I mean, pay the pros, right? Like mm -hmm. we, want, we want people playing competitively to be a source of reliable income. Mm -hmm. That's right. I mean, if we're looking at the top 32, is that enough for them to say, we're paying the very best pros, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. the rest of the people are what? I think that the estimated number of total Magic the Gathering players is 20 million. Mm -hmm. I think I've heard that figure a yeah. lot. Yeah. Right? Worldwide, you mean? Worldwide, yeah, yeah. Oh, in any capacity, right. right? I think, Shane, to give credit to your point, if we're going to define the professional class of Magic the Gathering players that would be supported by the company that publishes it as the top 32, I mean, the pin of a needle doesn't even really get to it at that point. Yeah. And that's... At the same time, in most professional endeavors, how many people play basketball? Yeah. How many players are in that's the That's true. NBA? That's true. One, one thing I, I want to go back to kind of the, the topic of the Magic as an eSport, right? And so one important thing is Magic the Gathering Online mm -hmm. isn't mentioned anywhere. I can't believe yeah. it. And two, Magic Arena has currently essentially no social system whatsoever and right. no support for tournament play whatsoever. So are they going to develop this quickly on top of it? Make it actually available, make, make, make it mission ready to like actually deliver on the promises they're yeah. saying? So if we're going to put $5 million into competitive Magic Arena play while challenging your friends right now requires like having a case sensitive yeah. name plus number. No spaces. Yeah, yeah no spaces. You, you both have to put the key in the nuclear briefcase <laughs> at the same and time. At the right time. Yeah, you know? it's, it's like, so this system they have is essential madness. Like, you know, when, you know, not to compare, but like, you know, Artifact comes out version 1.0 mm. and has, you know, free tournament structures that people can play yep. socially at will. Not you only can, that, but they have a mode where it's easy to to cast and, and, and like commentate on a game because you can see both hands, yeah. as far as I can tell. Like, right. And that right. was like in beta, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so they, they seem to be getting it better than even like $10 million aside, like, you do need that support to like really make it as a game these days. Wizards development is not their strong suit. Yeah. It mm -hmm. hasn't been. They've released, you know, multiple versions of MGTO which have been actively bad. Yeah. You yeah. know, everyone hated, you know, version three when it came yeah. out and then still bemoaned and, and it had to, you know, be drug over to version four. You know, they're not good at developing software. This yeah. is another indication of that. It's an extension to, of it, yeah. To, to Shane's point, we should be worried if we're expected to see a tournament structure developed into Arena, because Arena is fabulous. I personally yeah. love Arena. Yeah, Arena's great. Yeah. It's great to play. But, you know, if they have a lot more coding to do that we haven't seen yet, that's not a recipe for success in 2019. No. I mean, the, their deadline was PAX East in Boston, which is mm -hmm. late March. I mean, their first, their first $1 million tournament, mm -hmm. PAX East in Boston, end of March 2019. That's yep. four months away. So in four months, they're going to have a tournament structure built on top of Magic Arena, which right now plays like a really good beta. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to interject for a moment and say it is weird to hear Wizards of the Coast say we're going to put $10 million into our still in beta software. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I think That's I love Arena. I think the consensus here is that Arena is functioning well for us or that we enjoy it in some capacity. Certainly. But it's certainly not finished in any in any way. Mm -hmm. The idea of throwing all this money at it before it's even at the finish line is a very 
being gentle, I'd say it's ambitious. Being harsh, I'd say it's foolish. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Maybe it's the thing that drags it to the finish line. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it was the lack of That's investment in Magic Online, which caused all of these delays, all of these problems that got us through bad version after bad version. And quite frankly, there's no growth in it. Yeah. You can't watch it and see what's going on. It's not explosive. It's not intuitive. Yeah. I mean, it, they're, they're investing hard. In arena, ten million dollars. Listen, yeah, it's not that much money in 2018. Let's be real, mm -hmm. but it's an attention-grabbing headline, and I think that Wizards knows that. Yeah. I think that they're trying to, in this moment, solicit attention from both the delirious and delusional people who think that they're going to break into professional gaming in any capacity, yeah. but also maybe the folks who have been thinking about walking away from it, or instead of making their money as a pro Magic: The Gathering player, making it as a content mm -hmm. creator. Right. So who's yeah. on the bubble here? Who's gonna now start focus on grinding out these tournaments instead of posting shitty deck techs on YouTube? One of the things that I think that Magic has an uphill battle with is if they wanna be an eSport, many of the eSports that are competitive right now and have the big payouts are much less variance based, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, if you're good at Dota, if you're good at StarCraft II, you're good at Dota and StarCraft II because you know the game. And you are, you know, you are good at managing your micro. You're good at moving your guys around. You're good at, you know, knowing exactly when to do the exact right thing. In Magic, there's some of that, but even the very best players have like a 63% win rate. So right. a third of the, you know, over a third of the time, you're just losing because your deck didn't draw its third land. Right. Right. So if you're putting five million dollars into, you know, the electronic portion of that, and your game is still heavily variance based. What's to say that it's worth the effort to get really good at that? Yeah, Shane, maybe you're making a general theoretical point that in relationship to a game's variance going up, the rational participant's commitment of labor to it has to go down. Exactly. Right? If you can't rely on the marginal return of an additional hour of skill building into a game being like rewarding, then why are you going to put it in there? Exactly. Right? Like why not play why not play Dota? Like why right. not why not yeah. play why not play competitive Fortnite? Yeah. Where your skill much more outweighs the luck component of the game. Yeah, I just, I really want to get back to how are we going to get some of this money, right? <laughs> like, that's my question. Uh, I'm not very good, so you guys are going to have to do the heavy lifting. Over well, you there. have to rely on variance then, my friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. <laughs> or, your, or your gorgeous face. Yeah, that's right. Just well, kind of try to distract yeah, me. Yeah. Streamer, streamers do use cameras for reasons. You know? Yeah, I that's mean, true. We just got the beard cam with uh, Seth probably, but oh, Saffron Olive, which, I like, I had, I didn't know what he looked like, and now I know, and I love it. Yeah, he's a sweetheart. Yeah. He's a sweetheart. Well, you know, talking about Wizards of the Coast big esports announcement is actually a really lovely segue into our second topic of the day, mm -hmm. which is a simple question. Is Arena killing Magic the Gathering online? There was a recent article on Channel Fireball written by Florian Koch that observed that the price of a complete set of Magic the Gathering online, which is to say four copies of every single card every released card. on MTGO, right? It's a lot of cards. It's, it's a lot. It's, it's a beautiful. lot. Every card. He's observed that from September 2016 to present day, the value of that complete set has dropped precipitously. Mm -hmm. And just because I think it'll help, I'm going to do like, you know, the, the, the actual numbers here. Yeah, if you would, please. In 2016, it would be $29,000 for a complete so just, set. Just two years ago. Two years ago. Okay. Now, $14,000. So, so has it killed MTGO or has it killed MTGO finance? Yeah, or because both, like right? yeah. I, I'm sure there are still people playing MTGO to say that MTG Arena has killed MTGO. It's basically to say modern is no longer a thing, legacy is no longer a thing. Popper, yeah, popper. Commander. I mean, we've got standard Commander. popper essentially on MTG Arena, but yeah. the real popper is so much more broad and and nuanced than that, and, right. po and popular, and and super popular, and also like popular. super fun, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Popper, you learn. Popper, yeah. <laughs> but it's also super fun to watch. Like all of the stuff that you can only do on MTGO is there is still very streamable. And for people who are like interested in the technical game or like the broad base of brewing, I think there's no way that it's done. Hmm. And, and, oh, go ahead. So one of the things I was actually explaining related to the MTGO finance portion of this hmm. is that we have some sets that can exit. The economy and some sets that are locked into the economy so if it's in print now you can redeem the set mm -hmm. you can get it out so you expect to see less variability maybe for our audience could you explain what you mean by redeem the set i'm a little confused absolutely so 
on Magic the Gathering Online, part of the reason why the prices are pegged to real life card prices, which is a big difference between yeah. Arena, where yeah. things are much cheaper, right. is because you can take your online collection and turn it into a real life collection. Yeah. Now the way that's gonna happen is you huh. complete a set of cards. That means you need every mythic, every rare, every uncommon, every common, package those together and you can go through a redemption process mm. plus a monetary fee I believe it's twenty five dollars now. It used to be less. It used to be it less. Used to be really cheap. Yeah, no, they, they've they've raised it. I believe a significant amount. Um, and in doing so, you could exchange your digital collection for a physical. No collection. way. That's kind of I, like I knew about that, but like that's so that's so random and cool. Like I'm like oh, that's it, awesome. It, it is, and you don't see that in other online games. Yeah. And they, they gave their cards a value. Game. Yeah. And so for the listener at home, if you're unfamiliar, that's why you'll actually see like those sets and white boxes of complete sets mm -hmm. of a set, uh, a complete collection of a set. Those are the redemption sets. Now, mm -hmm. those can only exit for in print standard sets. So anything that's out of right. print. Is now locked into yeah. Magic the Gathering Online, and they were and they made they okay. made this time span in which you could redeem much shorter, mm. like within mm -hmm. the past what two years? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so like that that allows you to exit with less generosity. You had mm -hmm. you had a smaller time span, and if mm. you slept, you wept. Yes, and also it requires for anything that you can't extract from the Magic Online economy. That has to maintain value through the continued existence of Magic Online. Yeah, and the use of the platform. Right. right? Mm -hmm. um, I do want to just finish fleshing out this article by Mr. Sure. Koch because yeah. I thought it was pretty well written, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, it was good. He also, in addition to the precipitous drop in the price of the complete set of Magic the Gathering Online, identified a little bit of what you alluded to earlier, Dathan, which was the troubled developmental history of mm -hmm. Magic the Gathering Online, right? And mm -hmm. specifically the fact that when Wizards took it in-house, rather than continuing to contract it out to somebody else, I mean, they're a game design company, not a software company, and there were problems that kind of came along with that. Mm -hmm. I think really the more interesting question that we should be asking is not whether or not Magic the Gathering Arena is killing Moto, but whether Moto is just as viable. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like whether or not people want to play this extremely expensive game on an ugly yeah. client that doesn't work all the time mm -hmm. and is being replaced. One of the things that I think the article directly mentioned, but then kind of overlooked is, in terms of the financial impact of it, is the treasure chests. Right. So, treasure yeah. che so treasure chests are directly putting into the system expensive cards. Right. So what else can there be to be ex to expect? Because you can't extract them. Right. So essentially, essentially, it's a reprint set. It's like a mo modern yeah. master is constantly being opened, like lowering the value of your normal hierarchs yeah. and your Lilianas of the Veil. So that one is, I think, a big reason mm -hmm. that prices are going down. Mm -hmm. And then two, of course, we do have the reality of how long will they continue to support right. Magic Arena right. mm -hmm. and Magic Online. I think one thing Matt was mentioning earlier was you know, we have these you know, eternal formats like Popper and Modern and Legacy and EDH. You know, we have you know, one of our you know, pretty casual friends who loves EDH, like Ryan. Ryan loves EDH. And he plays EDH online, which blows my mind. Right, yeah. <laughs> because, like, he's, like, the last person I imagine, like, you know, digging through, like, the awful Magic Online interface to, like, you know, which I imagine is, like, the grinder's paradise, right? <laughs> right, And he right. just loves EDH, and he plays EDH online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think as long as Magic Online is giving them a minutia of profit, Mm -hmm. You know, th versus the amount that it takes to support it, they're going to be like, okay, yeah, if you want to keep paying some tickets in and playing your modern event, that's great. Let me ask maybe a pointed question. We've got two guys who are into finance and a dude who kind of knows a little bit about everything sitting on the table. I've spent money before. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I've spent my money before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's my question for you guys. Let's not worry about whether or not Magic the Gathering is going to, or uh, Magic the Gathering Online is going to be around, or whether or not Arena is at risk or whatever. Hearing what we're hearing about just the nominal monetary value of cards yeah, the on Modo, why am I not selling my entire collection right now and just saying, well, I got out when it was still okay? It's a good. That's a good question. Yeah. I think like something similar. I, I've I've only heard rumor like shades of rumors about this, but it seems like something similar happened with Artifact, which just came out, hmm. where it's like. The, the the mechanics of the finances behind that are, are similar to more similar to Moto than they are to Hearthstone or to, to any of the other t online TCGs. Yeah, the cards have value. Yeah, the cards have actual value. Hmm. Uh, and and it's 
I, I assumed that the people got into that market just to do the finance part of it, you know, just like going into it. So like, I can only imagine what val what actual value the cards end up having. And like, it really doesn't bode well. And also the way that people talk about it, it's like, how dare you charge me for things? Right. You know? Right. Which, yeah. is, which is like, are these card games just going in that direction where it's like, no, you just, it's like, pay us 50 bucks, we'll give you the whole set and you can just play as much as you want. Like, is that a card game that people want to play? We've talked about that a little bit before. I think a subscription based card game is kind of an untapped market uh, idea, right? If you're going to roll out content, let's say four times or four different installations in a given year, I got to pay 25 bucks to be on the bleeding edge of my favorite card game and then I don't have to worry about it anymore. It's an, it's an exciting idea. Yeah. I mean, those those haven't surprisingly haven't really touched the digital realm yet. Those exist in like the living card games, the LCGs, mm -hmm. like like Netrunner mm -hmm. by Dr. Richard Garfield. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's you you buy you buy the box as it comes out. And you you get all the cards, huh? And it's like you know, it's a fifteen dollar installment fee, like yeah. once a month or what, once every eight weeks. Isn't there another game that he designed or some somebody designed where it's like every deck is unique? Keyforge, yeah, Keyforge, Keyforge, yeah. I haven't, I haven't. He's like, been, he's played this. Yeah, yeah. I've I've hmm. had some Keyforge experiences. Um, <laughs> Dabbled a little wild whoa, whoa, in college, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know. Yeah. What I mean? yeah. <laughs> No, um, it, it was the kind of thing where it's unique experiences. It's not necessarily, in my opinion, geared for competitive play, mm -hmm. but it does provide you with a, a ability to really enjoy something the way that magic was intended to be enjoyed. Dathan, i got to ask you a follow-up question. Whoa, whoa, intended sure. to be enjoyed. <laughs> intended to be enjoyed. Intended to be enjoyed. They didn't think that everyone was going to have a four of them. Right. Every, you know, like seeing a Shivan dragon was supposed to be an experience. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not, it wasn't supposed to be a four of back in the, you know, like control days. Yeah, we didn't sure. have that concept of four of. It was just like, I got that card. Right. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Does your wife know you experimented with Keyforge in college? <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's one of the things which she's forgiven me for. That's really nice of her. She's a big woman. I mean, yeah. metaphorically, she's actually a very tiny woman. Yeah, yeah. Really. <laughs> she's she's going to be thrilled to know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so I guess final thoughts on the Moto situation. Because I think that blaming Arena for it, maybe. Yeah, that's a big part of it, probably. But it's not the only part of it, you know? What do we think? Why, I, why am I not selling my cards right now? Well, if you're like me, the reason you're not selling your cards right now is they aren't worth anything to begin with. Yeah, there you go, sure. Like, like the fact is, if you were dabbling in Magic Online, your collection is worth nothing. Yeah, a the couple hundred people, bucks, maybe. Oh, yeah. tops. Like, the only people who are really affected by this in terms of how the, the prices are shifting, like, either you have a deck that you were playing and you will continue to play until the thing shuts down, if it's like like modern or something like that. Or like the legacy guys, right? Someone's sitting on this deck that they've just bought into a million years ago. They played it a hundred million times. But you can still play the deck. The yeah. question is like, if you've got a huge expansive collection, yeah, I would probably get out. But if you're not that person, if you're me, my commons, uncommons, and rares from doing booster drafts yeah. can sit there for forever and I won't miss it. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. I think what's, I agree with you. I think what's, Weird is, well not weird, what's emphasizing or increasingly people getting out of Magic the Gathering online is how many pros are saying like, I like playing Arena. Like, right. I love playing Arena. Even like drafters I respect, like the people on Lords of Limited are saying like, the, one of the guys is, yeah, I'm doing all my drafting on Magic Arena. Like, I just prefer it. Like Marshall on Limited Resources mm -hmm. is saying, yeah, I'm doing all my drafting on Arena. Right. When you're hearing that, you're just saying like there's fewer cards going into the card supply. Sure. There's fewer like people are testing standard on Magic Arena. So if you're testing standard on Arena, people aren't testing standard on Magic Online. So Magic Online is going to be continually outmoded by the newer technologies people mm -hmm. are drafting and playing the money making standard on Magic Arena, right? So and as we see more money being put into playing Magic Arena with yeah. the five million dollars in yeah. you know, 2019. So I don't know if Magic Arena is killing Magic Online. I think Wizards of the Coast is making Magic Online less of an incentive for people to play. All right, well, having decided, I think definitively, that Magic the Gathering Online is dead and buried and in the ground, Let's move on to other games, oh and uh, let's specifically move on to making fun of other games. Yeah. Ooh, I'm yeah. in. I'm in. Yeah. Other <laughs> games suck. Magic is the best. There yeah. we go. Okay, so we're all in agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Should sure, sure. yeah. I play other games? <laughs> Get out. Yeah, filthy. 
So we're going to play a game now called Boom Roasted, and the rules are very simple. I am going to take these little cards that I printed out for you guys from lesser, inferior trading card games, and I'm going to ask you to give me your thoughts on those cards, okay? Right. Here's the rules. Uh, whatever makes me laugh is going to get points, and whatever doesn't make me laugh is going to get my score. All right. All right. Is, there, is, there, is, there, is there an abrupt, abrupt decay on the line? There is, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> is there another abrupt decay? Yeah, where's my abrupt decay? <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Doesn't sound abrupt at all. Yeah, I kind of like the on this. <laughs> I knew you'd collect. Okay, I'm keeping this green, keeping this green paper on top. All it's right. an abrupt decay. That's an actual abrupt. Yeah, I don't actually. Oh, have is a it a Ravnica or, or an M3? Uh, well, I don't know. What is that one? I think, I think it's. I think it's Ravnica. Okay. That 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 would be a uh, return to Ravnica. Return, yeah, return, right. not right. return to return to. Yeah, Ravnica, Ravnica is that weird little little peak castle. I'm gonna put this here. This is the second time we've come back to Ravnica. The return to return to Ravnica. Yeah, like third. Third time is going on right now. Sure. Okay. Well, why don't we move on with this silly game? I'm excited about it. I'm basically All a right. big fan of like mid '90s Def Jam comedy roasts. So this is this is a big this is a big thing. Also, we so rarely get to push our glasses up and be like, "Wow, well, yeah, I know <laughs> this yeah. is obviously inferior to the games right, that we play." So, oh, gentlemen, sure. why don't you flip over your first card there, and <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask these guys to uh, look down at the beauty in front of them and give oh, them. Man, uh, I love this hot topic reject so much. <laughs> So we're looking at here, uh, this is from a popular trading card game called Yu-Gi-Oh. Mm -hmm. This is Humpty Grumpty, uh, <laughs> who, and I'm going to try to figure this out, costs three stars and is a dark. D yeah, th this shit is dark. Yeah, yeah. he's a uh, oh, zombie man. effect, and once a turn you can change this card to face down defense position, <laughs> which is something I, think I learned in like a self-defense class or yeah. something. If this card is flip summoned... Uh, it gains 800 attack. That seems like a lot. Seems like a lot of attack until the end of the turn. Mm -hmm. I think what I learned about Yu-Gi-Oh! is you take the zeros off. Yeah, take the zeros off, right? <laughs> and then you just realize it's fucking dumb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, already I can tell this game is well designed. Yeah. Uh, and the art only confirms that. Kazuki Takahashi fucking nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah. Just absolutely yeah. crushed it with this piece I mean, of this, this looks like Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, <laughs> yeah. with five... <laughs> As as like a as a goth girl's wet dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pale as pale as all get out, and yeah. the nose ring, and also wings. He has and wings. Wing ears. Is yeah. this an O face? Like, what is what is going on here? Is this guy in ecstasy of joy, or what's 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 going on? No, I think he's just been flip summoned. No, yeah, yeah. No. No, I, I, I think he, he might eight hundred attack for the turn. I think uh, he's in face down defense. <laughs> Uh, shout out to Yu-Gi-Oh for designing their cards to have uh, text with four different sizes on the same card. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I, have you seen one of these in real life ever? Oh, they're like, ugly as sin. They, I don't know how you read them. Like the only <laughs> card game I've seen worse than this is Force of Will, which has like you know large-breasted anime women with text, mm. not even in text boxes, just sort of floating aimlessly. <laughs> I'm only interested in half of that. <laughs> yeah. I will say this: if I would have turned this in for a class project in any school I've been to. I would have gotten an F, and they would have seen, seen me after class, and there would have been a counselor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah fucking yeah, yeah. count. So I, I have a question, and yeah. I think I'm going to do this for all these cards, but if this were in Magic the Gathering, oh. what would, the, what would the, the text be? What would the stats be? Ooh, I'm gonna, Humpty Grumpy is, is the, is the, the it's prompt. A it's a black creature spell, okay. I think, right? All right. Yeah. It would it's, be in an unset. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's probably a 2-1 with flying and some ridiculous type of a it, end I, of turn bonus attack. I feel like something. it gets flying if something happens during the turn. If, yeah. if a card is flipped up, if a card is flipped over... No, uh, man, the only way this thing gets flying is if you fart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, I just cannot get over this guy. The, the 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 expression on the eyes. You know what I mean? Like it's like, oh. Yeah. Is, 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 is it is it anguish or power? Like it's. <laughs> or, or did he just hit like a really righteous blunt? <laughs> <laughs> Anguish power would be a great magic card, and that would definitely be something we would hand out on this show. That yeah, be, yeah, yeah. That would be a red white. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna wrap it up on Humpty. Dathan, I think you get first points on this one. Flip it over. Flip it over to the All right. next one. All right, guys. This is a card from the Pokemon trading card game, and it's a trainer supporter card called Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick. Uh, it features. I don't even know what this guy's up to. He looks like he likes to get greased up and do dirty shit. Yeah. Uh, he, you can play this card only when it is the last card in your hand. You put a fist Pokemon from your discard <laughs> pile into the onto the bench, and then you draw five cards, which seems good. That seems good. 
Uh, pretty mm-hmm. restrictive there's, there's, card, though. There's yeah. a lot to unpack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's 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 his last resort, the hidden ball trick. This is apparently Maxi. <laughs> Maxi is suave AF. <laughs> <laughs> and then you gotta unpack the fist in itself. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, and then the yeah. <laughs> Is is he is he swab oh, or is he the kind of guy who would say I'm your new dad, <laughs> <laughs> or or I have a hidden ball trick, yeah, yeah, dude, and see what the response yeah. is. Max, Maxie's got a Fet Life account. We all know that for sure. The, both of these so far have been pretty goth AF. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So draw five is obviously incredibly powerful in Magic the Gathering, powerful. right? So how desperate does one have to be to perform the, the hidden, hidden ball, ball trick? trick. <laughs> All right, all right. I'm gonna ask the same question. Yeah. Uh, if this were an MTG, what uh, what would it be? Oh, this is like totally some red spell that allows oh, you to. Sure. It's like it's like that. What's that uh, prowess guy that they're playing in the modern decks now, where you discard your hand and then draw three cards? Bedlam reveler. Bedlam reveler. Mm-hmm. He That's does look like is. he has reveled some bets <laughs> for sure. This guy looks like he's a fucking college counselor that gets pervy way too quickly oh, yeah, with yeah. the fucking students. Yeah. Th- this guy has to be blue red. He has to be. You think so? He mm. looks. He looks so sure of himself. Yeah. So cocksure. Smug AF. <laughs> yeah. For sure. This is that cat, the blue part or the red part? The, the blue, <laughs> part, yeah, yeah. blue part. This cat is watching porn on Google Glass. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this, You're this, right, he is wearing Google Glasses. This, this, this abrupt decay is good as yours, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at him. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm going to give that one to Dathan, too. Sorry, right. guys. I think Sorry. we can't even catch up at this point. Yeah. No, we have to have like a really good joke yeah. for this last one. Uh, and in the final round, I forgot to announce this until now, the, the points are worth 100. So, oh, you yeah, know, okay. put, it, put it together, guys. Right. Yeah, so fuck Dathan. Yeah, fuck Dathan. <laughs> All right, so our final card is called Viscous Nasal Goo. Yeah. It, this is from the card game Art fact, also designed by my very good and close personal friend, Richard C. Garfield, Doctor. How Richard is Richard C. doing? We haven't spoken in a while. Oh. It's, it's been strange. I, he's been busy. He, he's been I really thought busy. after the last... Yeah. No? No. Oh. We'll talk after the show, David. Yeah, yeah my, my mistake. So this artifact card costs four. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a sparkle-type card, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what that is, necessarily. There's a picture of a go- of a dude with tood at the bottom right hand oh, corner. Oh yeah, dude. And that dude with tood is also like ejaculating a a a He's not rocking snot goo. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think this is an act of dominance on this cat person here? Is this 100%. like a way of him showing his sexual primacy? I mean, what what is happening? The polar bear on the ground looks like he's in face up enjoyment position. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to say that this the, the art on this card looks so much like the anti-bullying campaigns have all failed, right? Like, this yeah. is just like yeah. some big, mean <laughs> asshole shoving down someone smaller than him and snotting on his face. Does it look know? like those campaigns, or does it look like a furry convention <laughs> yeah. that, that went exactly the way that they right, right, right. As planned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the artist's persona here yeah. is on the bottom, and he's getting yeah. the ride of his life. Yeah. Oh, I, I love it. I'm so happy that Matt told me that this came from Dota. Because I thought it was a mashup of Killer Instinct and Boogerman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I thought this is like a throwback game based on Genesis. Oh, you that's know? fantastic! Like, this is ridiculous. What like the spiked anime hair? The this is Toe Jam and Earl fuzziness. level. Yeah, yeah. Oh god, this is yeah for sure. Toe Jam and Earl three. What the fuck? Earthworm yeah. Jim. So so I like that he has a eye patch because. I feel like he he's gotten he's received the nasal goo as much as he's giving it out. Yeah. I, mean, you know? his, his, I learned it from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just giving back. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. the The whole thing is very uh, unfamiliar and strange to me. So I hate it. I, I hate sure. it. If it doesn't sure. have well. a Deckmaster logo on the back of it, frankly, it's trash. Yeah. You know? I also feel like this is overcosted. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Fundamentally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only negative two hey, armor? <laughs> no. Hey, Shane, is this card bad? I have played some artifacts. Really? What? Really? But oh. I don't know. Yeah, I like artifacts, but I don't think this. I think you play Bristleback for his body, not for his signature card. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and I will say this. And you could look at his body. Yeah. yeah. Mm. When you have your dalliances, you might as well have a dalliance with something which is not just, you know, um,. A card game, but also erotic. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you got a lot of experience out of this. Mm-hmm, this is great. Mm-hmm. I hope Nicole doesn't watch this. <laughs> yeah. Please don't pay attention. Yeah, to it. don't worry. Nobody watches this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I think we all had a pretty good time making fun of other inferior trading card games. Mm-hmm. 
Let's bring the focus back to Magic the Gathering and, you know, leave our minds all these thoughts of hidden balls and Humpty Grumpties and mm -hmm. talk about an interesting topic of unconventional or alternative formats of yes. Magic the Gathering, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody's familiar with your standards, with your moderns, mm -hmm. with your limited events, either sealed or draft or whatnot. But Magic, and one of the many joys of the game, is that there's a multitude of different ways to play it, and some of them are very formal, and some of them are a little you know, more casual, a little bit more less fleshed out. And I want to ask everybody on the couch today just to describe an alternate format of Magic the Gathering they found particularly enjoyable themselves. And I'm going to direct this conversation very specifically towards my very good friend, <laughs> Dathan Brown, because I, I know what he's going to tell me, and I just want to hear it. He's got, he's got a spicy me. meatball. Lay it on me. So I am someone who loves Limited. I grew up playing Limited, uh, especially when I got to, to college. I got to do tons of draft, tons of sealed. And I wanted to take that up a notch. Yeah. Like, like limited is a beautiful thing. It's, magic pure, it's limited, pure magic. Yeah. It, it is the purest form of magic until you take that, you distill it down, and you get full box sealed. Mm. Now, if you haven't experienced the joy of full box sealed, what I'm talking about is you take the normal six packs that you would open for a sealed magic event and then add 30 packs to it from the same <laughs> booster box. And in doing so... It sounds like a full do, box. Yeah. Oh, it is a full box. <laughs> yeah. It is a full box. And it, it takes some of the best parts of doing mm. a sealed event, of doing a limited event, and then... You know, just 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 takes it to to the next fucking skull fucks. That might be the word that I want to use. <laughs> I imagine that the four copy rule doesn't apply in full box sealed. Right? You you are correct, Scott. Okay, you solid. open it, you play it. Yeah. Including the the best example of this format that I have was Kalash Block. Mm. I played a twelve land, forty card. Full box sealed deck. And the way I was able to Whoa. execute that <laughs> yeah. was using a tune with either. Oh, yeah. That was yeah. very I fair had card. Five of them. <laughs> oh my God. And so, like, turn one, every game was a tune with either. Yeah. yeah Go yeah, get yeah. another land, because I only had one green source in my hand. Right, right. Turn two, play a long tusk cub. And that long tusk cub can do work. It's already off got the bat. A four, four energy or two energy if you cast two a tune with aethers. Is it two with either one energy or two? I can't oh, it's two. two. Yeah, so Long Tusk Cub is already looking yeah. hot. It's, it's vaguely mm -hmm. goyfish. Yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> vaguely goyfish. It is vaguely goyfish, and I'm getting that out of uh, out of my full box sealed collection, out of my full box sealed build. Uh, Dathan and I have one kind, well, one of many things in common uh, <laughs> is that we both love taking like established limited formats and pushing them past their accepted boundaries. Mm -hmm. Certainly, I, I've never seen the two of us happier than when we went down into your basement. Mm -hmm. I think it was, and we played Humpty uh, Dumpty. No, yeah. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty was there. Yeah, Humpty, Humpty, yes, yeah. Rumpty. <laughs> We went down into your basement and we played the hidden ball trick. Yeah. <laughs> My trap card. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we went down to your basement and we played conspiracy, and it's a draft format where mm -hmm. you play with three packs. But then instead of stopping at three, we just drafted. I think a total of nine. Yeah, I think one of us was like, "Guys, what if we just opened more exactly, packs?" Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that was me. Yeah, that yeah, was that definitely me. That. I'm not surprised. Yeah. 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 What if we just kept opening packs? Yeah. 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 That, that's what you would call on brand. Right. Uh, Dathan, not even once with heroin for you. Yeah. Right? yeah. You're, not allowed to, you're not allowed to do it just once. All right. Like, Shane, let's move on. I got to learn a little bit about this uh, cube that you've been talking about. Mm. It's, a, it's a peasant cube, which means commons and uncommons. And you'd oh, be surprised cute. over the years how much power there is mm, sure. in commons and uncommons. Yeah, if you take the best of yeah, any exactly. given set and just jam them all together, that's got to be a lot of fun. was an uncommon. I mean, you, you've got yeah. clone as an uncommon. Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you've got ancient ancient tomb mm -hmm. as an uncommon. Tempest, baby. Yeah, I mean, so you've got you've got a wild and wacky set of cards to put into your common and uncommon cube, and you can do any number of archetypes that you want within that. Like, I mean, you could... I mean, our good friend Eric Blush of last episode definitely forces red, red, blue storm every time we've played yeah. the peasant cube. Not Mill. He, he was talking about Mill in the last episode, yeah. but uh. yeah. So I mean, he, I mean, you can you can have you can have the most basic mono red aggressive format. You can have a black unearth reanimate you know a deck. You could 
you could have green stompy, you could have white weenie, mm-hmm. you could have you know your generic white blue flyers. And the coolest part about it is it's it's cheap to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's fun to do. And because of the cards, you're not you're not seeking out like you know your Lili- Liliana of the Veils. You're not putting in your dual lands. You can put all your effort into getting like weird foils or like full art Grand Prix promos sure, or like sure, you know you yeah. get, I take my I t- whenever I go to a GP like twice a year at mm-hmm. most I see what artists are going to be there and I pull those cards out of my cube mm-hmm. and I get them signed by That's the really artist cool, yeah. like a full quarter of my cube is either foil weird art or signed yeah mm-hmm. and like that that's with that's with very little effort honestly is, is that what you were asking me about german cards earlier was I asking you about? I was asking you about Russian cards. Russian cards. Oh, no, that, that's my he Tron deck. Wants the deck. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because if, if you're gonna Russian out a deck, it's got to be Karnsky. Yes, it does. I have a question for you, Shane. Yeah. Designing a cube feels like a pretty big compositional effort, right? You have to sit down and with whatever rules you're working with about what's gonna go into the cube, like kind of play the role of like kind of R and D or like the development cycle of Magic: The Gathering itself. With your peasant cube, did yep. you choose a particular archetypes, or did you just pick a bunch of cards that you thought were cool, or what'd you do? Well, so I started by I honestly uh, just copied majority of it from uh, so Cube Tutor is a site that okay. where Great people site. people put um, you know, thousands at this point I imagine cubes of you know popper cubes to peasant cubes to fully powered out cubes. And you could go into them, and then there's threads that are dedicated to particular cubes where people talk about their decision-making processes. Hmm. You can see the add and some tracked history mm-hmm. of a cube. So I started by looking at a cube that it seemed cool, it seemed well-regarded, it seemed easy to build. I went from there. And then as you every set that comes out, you can look at it and say, what in this can fit into a synergy or create a whole new synergy within the cube? You know, take look at the see what's been outmoded, see what's strictly better mm-hmm. in magic terms. Isn't that such a fun thing to like scan as a filter on new cards that come out to be like, hey, is this going to fit in my cube? Is this something mm-hmm. that I'm going to be able to like slot into this existing thing that yeah. I've got going? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And ult and like the master sets are bonkers for it because ultimate masters they, is downshifting, they so they they yeah. downshift a rare to an uncommon, and all of a sudden you have a formerly powerful card that's now accessible. All right, well, having addressed Humpty Grumpty, Peasant Cubes, and the Cold Snap Block, we're going to wrap up our evening tonight mm. with another game of our favorite Ooh. little game called Pack One, Pick One. Yes, always a good one. The rules are very simple. In this you. edition, I've printed out a random oh. booster pack of Ultimate Masters. It's just a collection of the one rare or mythic rare you might expect to see in there. Three uncommons and then the rest being commons. And I'm going to ask the boys right now to flip over their cards and to see what the pack has in store for them. <laughs> we'll give them about 15, maybe 30 seconds to look at the cards, and then they got to come back to me and explain what their pack one pick one is. This now, is this one is yeah, interesting this is, this because is this is Ultimate Master. Like so Durant, yeah. in the back of your mind, I want you to remember <laughs> so that this pack costs you 12 goddamn dollars to buy. <laughs> all right, so this is not Hachi, a cheap Hachi. one, all right? All right, so I'm a nice guy, but I'm only going to give you guys another three, two, whoa, whoa, one seconds. I'm gonna I'm gonna push you on this one, Matthew. I'm sorry. What's uh What's your pack one pick one? Man, I, like so, this is the. The, the the question I'm asking myself is, do I just want to rare draft this pack? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Just because, like, through the breach, wow, what a what a, a ridiculous modern card. Um, I know a little bit about the set. I haven't really gone deep on it, but I do know that uh, white X heroic is a thing. Yeah. So I'm looking pretty strongly at at, at phalanx leader, um, white weenie kind of stuff. Feels like a good uh, a good archetype to be in. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, Angel of Despair, powerful card. Definitely don't want to draft that first pick. Yeah, it's hard to go into two colors on your first <laughs> and pick. And seven right? CMC. And, and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and also, the what most... a downshift. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I think it was I think it was. I mean, rightfully so, probably. I mean, it's a vindicate on a stick. Um, I mean, if I wanted to be in green, I don't know what the sort of like top end of green is in the set. I think Prey Upon is a perfectly good 
uh, pick. We're of a very similar mindset. I'm just saying that right now, looking at this, uh, looking at this pack for myself, sorry to jump in line, guys. Mm -hmm. Phalanx Leader and Prey Upon are the two cards that I'm looking at more than any others, and, you know? And the thing you want to keep in mind here is Prey Upon says target. And as Matthew said, yeah. this is a heroic. Heroic, set. yeah. So yeah. you're going to trigger heroic. You're Ooh, gonna get a bigger I think Wingsteed is yeah. in there, too, right? Real yeah. good. Yeah, so I don't know if, if green white heroic is a thing. I can imagine that it is. Um, but those two, those two feel of a, a similar power level to me, and I think they work really well together. Well, Shane O'Mac, uh, what do you got for us here? Well, you know me. I'm, ta I'm taking the through the breach. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Because I love value. Mm -hmm. No, but I mean, I mean, Phalanx Leader is awesome. I mean, I think that I mean each creature you control. It's much. It's just. It's if you draft a deck around that, it's mm -hmm. going to be bonkers. Well, mm -hmm. it, it, it accomplishes something that a lot of two drops don't, which is that it's good early, like yeah. a lot of two drops are. But it's also very good late, which mm -hmm. a lot of two drops are not. White right? white's tough though. Yeah. I mean, so so I mean if I you're if you're in a two color deck, hitting white white is not. I mean I'm gonna get in my spike my spike mode. Hitting your white white early <laughs> is not easy, especially yeah. with the fixing this set has. Yeah, it's not I'm, great. I'm curious about death denied because those types of cards have proven in contemporary modern sets, hmm. I mean contemporary sets, to be really valuable to get. You stuff out of your graveyard back to your hand to get that card advantage. So you you know you cast that on. I guess it's an instant. You cast you cast. I mean you cast playable. it on two at the end of your turn. You're two for one. Yeah. You know what I mean. You cast that's it for a very strong card. For four, it's bonkers. Yeah. I mean, I think in the right build, it's great. I mean, I think that Dreamscape Artist is good for fixing. The fixing in this set is not phenomenal. So how like, much you know, attention have you paid to uh, what I've affectionately referred to as um? As what what what's the uh, draft format look like? I, I can actually answer that Please, a little bit. Please, that's right, yeah. This is one of the, the sets. So anytime you see a master set, the themes are strong. Draftability is the paramount thing when they come to designing the set after yeah. card value and, of course, selling packs. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> That's number one <laughs> with a bullet. <laughs> got to yeah. sell some packs. Got, got to cash in on the secondary market. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But this one has a very strong graveyard matters huh. theme. Huh, okay. So it when does. we look at our pack one, pick one here, there's a couple cards that stand out for graveyard matters. Obviously... Uh, you're gonna see that we have the, uh, you know, the the Dreamscape artist. We've got the Pulse of Marasa, which is return target card to your hand. If you're taking a card, through the breach is hard not to take. Yeah. Because that is a card with value. But if I'm drafting for fun, and quite frankly, if I'm drafting, I'm probably doing it for fun. I actually am gonna take that Dreamscape artist. Really? I'm going to take that Dreamscape Artist for a couple reasons. One, it's a discard outlet. Yeah. Madness is in this set. And, and Graveyard think, Matters. And Graveyard Matters. I think that that blue-red madness is something kind of spicy. Yeah. This is something that you're only going to draft a few times. Yeah. At the, yeah. At the cost of it, if you're chopping down you know, $25, $30 for a draft, you're talking about like you know the PPTQs doing this are 85 bucks in some places, yeah. like 50 bucks in really nice stores. Shout out to your local, and I mean real local gaming store <laughs> who does that for you with the box hopper yeah. in the prize pool. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. like those are those are great things. So if you're drafting this and you're doing it with your friends, you're doing it with them for fun, you got some yeah. ball back flowing. Get yourself a dreamscape artist. Also, bro. I mean, look Get at this. Yourself a dreamscape. Artist. Also, I mean, look at this art. This guy definitely fucks. Oh yeah. <laughs> he's, come at me, bro. Yeah. Oh, he's like, yeah. he's like, what up, fam? What are we doing tonight? <laughs> Listen, yeah. I don't want to be too vulgar, but I'll say Angel of Despair is probably a, a pretty high candidate on the definitely fucks uh, fuck scale as well. So the, yeah. the thing is, Angel of Despair does fuck. But not in the way that you were initially thinking of. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it yeah. came out differently than you went into it with. <laughs> yeah, it came out how she wanted. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Dathan, you're going with Dreamscape Artist. I'm going Dreamscape. Shane, you're going with experience. Through the Breach. So, and, I mean, I'm thinking like you could Through the Breach. It, that's not just for value. You can like you can have some fun with that shit. I mean, oh, you're you, gonna splice onto Arcane. That's what <laughs> you're gonna do, right? You're I mean, gonna... you, there's there's like there's like the the colorless Eldrazi stuff. Oh at, yeah, like, there's you, a ton of big, big at, boys at uncommon and common. You just like throw that stuff out there, like you know. I get my value. I have my cake and eat it too. Yeah, there's yeah, there's a lot of big boys in this. And Matthew, side. gun to your head. Are you going with Phalanx or are you going with Prey Upon? Uh, I think I would go with Phalanx. Yeah, and then okay. hope hope 
to ho uh, beyond hope that Prey Upon would come back around. Probably won't. But I'll find other stuff to target this well, next week. Uh, so for the writer, 15 for... people watching yeah. this video, I would encourage you to criticize the choices made by our guests in the comments below. Make sure to insult them on an ad hominem basis. Uh, pay special attention to the ways in which they're strange or different than you. Yeah. That, that, that's what I would recommend. <laughs> I'm All sensitive. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this uh, episode of Tapped. I want to thank, especially, I mean, Matt, we're pretty blessed to have such great guys join us for this. Yeah, we, for the we, show tonight, we, right? I, I love that we know so many people who want to talk at length about the nerdiest of topics. Yeah, it's fantastic. Gathering. It's great. Right? It's crazy that I've been looking. I came into town early for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. Well, we're honored to have you. Uh, thank you, Shane, and thank you, Dathan, for coming on out. And thank you, the audience, for watching our fledgling little Magic the Gathering talk show. Uh, check out some of our social media, Patreon, Twitter, Facebook links in the uh, you know little box down below. And stay tuned for our next next episode which will be coming out sometime in January. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.